Guys, we are actually coming up on one of the most popular habitats here at the zoo, our chimp habitat. We have one chimp named Amy. She is gonna have a baby. Good morning, chimpanzee habitat. Gotta make sure these windows are clean. We're gonna have lots of visitors soon coming to look at that new baby. So excited about this baby coming, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Super stoked. I hope we have another girl. Uh, yeah. I think I've been team girl, like, this entire time. This morning, Sarah, Jenny, and myself, we need to make sure that the chimp habitat's nice and clean for them to have their breakfast. I'm gonna make sure their food is spread out far and wide. Since Amy is a low-ranking chimp and she's pregnant, I wanna make sure that she has access to plenty of food. Chimps live in troops. An alpha male oversees everything. With Amy being low ranking, a lot of the higher ranking chimps will steal her food. Amy, come here, babe. How are you, baby? Being pregnant, we want to make sure that she is gaining the weight that she needs to gain. Let's release the chimps. Keeper Campbell to Keeper Wiley. We are ready for chips. The chimps, they all get really excited to go out onto the habitat. They have so many choices. If they want to get away from people, they can disappear behind a hill. If they want to be up close and personal, they can do that. How cute. We've got a climbing structure so the chimps can get up really high. That's so cool. It's wide open up to the sky, so they can just look up and feel like they're free. So there's Lance and there's Sakoto. Jeannie's sitting there on the tree. Hi, G Beans. John's way up high. See lots of chimps. But I don't see Amy anywhere. She's missing out on a lot of breakfast right now. This is Hospital One. I'm about to stop by Chimp. All right. I'll be there in a second. Right now, I'm heading over to see Amy, who's due with the baby any day now. It's pretty important that we get this ultrasound done to make sure that the baby's healthy. One of the things that I love about the North Carolina Zoo is there is no normal day. I may be in the grasslands in the morning to look at a rhino, but I can get three or four calls while I'm out there to go look at the lame polar bear. I can be all over this place, and it's a big park. Is she ready to go? She is all ready. So um, Amy's been doing really good so far with good. the ultrasound. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully we can locate this baby pretty quickly. Hi, Amy, how you doing? Look what I got for you. I got this for you. Oh, is that your belly? Thank you. You want that? Oh, yes. Let me see your arm. Oh, you're a good boy. Want that? Gus is Amy's five-year-old son. We're hoping he's going to be a good big brother. What are you doing, huh? OK, Amy, you ready, dear? Are you ready to show me that baby? Oh, it's a good girl. She's showing me her belly already. <laughs> She's ready. I've been working with Amy the past six months on her ultrasound. OK, let's do this. She has to have trust in me and trust that what I'm doing is OK and that she's going to get a really nice reward. Piece of apple, you got it? We share 98% of our DNA with them, so you could say that they are 98% human. She's so patient. She's so smart. I feel like I'm looking at a person. I'm not supposed to say this, but she is probably one of my favorites. <laughs> OK, Amy, you ready, dear? See your belly. Oh, it's a good girl. I know. Come here. Can I do this? Let's see your belly. She's obviously feeling a little bit of anxiety. Can I put this on you? Really? She may not want to do this. I am a little worried. I want to make sure that the baby is still looking pretty healthy in there. We're going to potentially have to come up with a plan B. I can kind of direct okay. you, and she may just trust you a little bit more. 
We take baby steps and she can leave anytime she wants. Uh, you're just going to get it as close as much as possible. Okay. Good girl. Is this your belly? Good girl. Good girl, Amy. There you go. Oh, she's Good girl, going Amy. Look at her. Angle it that way a little bit. Such good girl, Ames. Girl. Right now. Aim this way just a touch. Okay. Good girl, Amy. How's that? Uh, oh, perfect. Okay. We're getting really, really good images. You're doing so good, Amy. Now we can watch the images that we just took. Hopefully, we have a healthy baby. So um, the head is this way. All of oh. this is spine right here. Okay. Um, this is a, an arm. I'm glad you know what you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> There's our heartbeat right there. Seeing a baby that you've been waiting on for the past seven months is actually kind of indescribable. That is a really strong chimpanzee heart. That is, I mean, she is beating really, really nicely. So she's she's growing well. Uh, so uh, got a got a good sized kid in there. Yes. Hey, baby is looking awesome. Hearing him say that makes me feel like I've accomplished like this huge goal that Amy and I have both been working towards for six months. Good job. Awesome job. In human care, chimps tend to give birth fairly quick during the nighttime hours. We have no idea when it's going to happen. We're all just waiting to just come in and there be a baby. Guys, this is fall here at the North Carolina Zoo. Oh, the black bears. One thing I can tell you 100% about the black bears is how much they absolutely love honey. I'll put some on this tree over here. Sure. So I'm just drizzling some honey. They love sweet stuff. A bear in the wild is going to spend a majority of its time wandering around looking for food. So we're trying to recreate that for them. And we're trying to think, like, what would be challenging for them? We want them to work for it. I like to put some of the produce out on some of the bushes so they have to get their noses up off the ground. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle we make for the bear. All right, that's good. Nova Luna, outside. Today, we're going to be giving the honey to Nova and Luna, and their sisters. He's coming, he's coming. Nova and Luna have different personalities. They're very smart. Luna's a little more, you know, on the crazy side. She's high energy. She's always getting into things. She got it. <laughs> Moving that log. Oh, she found all your honey. <laughs> Nova is super chill. She just likes to hang out and have a good time. What is Nova doing? Oh my gosh. On the side. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Those little claws. Oh, oh, Andrew. Whoa! He's eating off the trees. <laughs> Best day ever. <laughs> it's a shame we can't let Holly out. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go check on her. Alright, I hope she's alright. We have three black bears here. Hey Holly! Holly is 28. Uh, she's an older bear. She is a sweetheart. We refer to her as Princess Bear because um, she's very particular about her food. We noticed some changes in her behavior. We gave her a bone the other day, and she didn't really eat it. She usually tears right into it. She's also not opening her mouth. I started getting a little worried, so I put in a call to the vet hospital, and JB's going to come have a look at her. Hey guys. Hey. How are we doing? Just a little concerned. We offered her her bone in here and she didn't touch it. And that's not normal for her. Okay. What's up? What are you doing here? See you how know, she's got a lot of saliva right there? Is that normal for her? For, I guess, the last couple of weeks it's become normal. Okay. She's had a, like a ball of foam basically okay, forming. Okay. I'm going to see if we can swab some of that saliva out of her way. This is not good. There's a mass. 
like right on the lip. Oh, yeah. So that could be causing a little bit of the pain. She has a little growth. Not sure what it is at this point. Probably within the next uh, four or five days, we'll get her under anesthesia and get a really close look at her. Okay, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. We're not really sure what it is, so it's a little bit concerning. She's an older bear, and you know, we care a lot about her. She's really sweet. It would be very difficult to lose her. It would be pretty heartbreaking. So we're hoping for the best outcome, for sure. Good morning. Let's go. Over here, big guy. I'm hearing some odd noises. Okay, is somebody fighting? Is somebody unhappy? Ooh, ooh, there's a little bit of blood on the floor. What's going on? I just got into work. I'm hearing some odd noises. Okay, is somebody fighting? Is somebody unhappy? Ooh, ooh, there's a little bit of blood on the floor. What's going on? <gasps> oh my goodness. <gasps> you got a baby, honey. just gave birth. She is about two weeks early, but these things happen on their own time frame. Oh, what a sweet baby. Amy's got the baby in her arms, and you could tell that she's just a doting mother. The two of them are just so bonded already. Oh my goodness. We'll have to go call the vet so they can get a good look at this, and I have to go tell all my coworkers. I'm gonna call Christy. Oh my gosh, she's gonna be so excited. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes. We've got some big news. What's up? Amy had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh my gosh, she is doing such a great job. She's got the baby all cleaned up. She's a good mama. Well, tell Amy congratulations. We will. I'm hoping for a girl. We do have quite a few boys. I got my fingers <laughs> crossed for a girl. It'll be a her. All right, so get on down here so you can see her. Thank or him. <laughs> Hi, Nandi. Got some treats over here. You see who's watching us, don't you? Yeah. The work's coming immediately. They're just beautiful, impressive animals. I take care of these animals all the time, so I really am attached to them. They are threatened in the wild because of the habitat loss and the poaching. They are on a species survival plan to ensure that their population grows to a healthy number. See the tight little group down there? The one standing out kind of in front, I think, is Briggs. Briggs is our male breeding forex. We need to move him to another zoo so he can continue to breed. It could be vital to the survival of the species. I'll miss Briggs. He's been a good guy. Capturing Briggs will be difficult because these oryx are nervous and they will run if you get too close to them. The only way we're going to get that oryx off of the habitat is to anesthetize him with the dart gun. We're cutting material to camouflage uh, an area for the vet to hide behind. If they see movement, they'll bolt. And it could be anything. It could be a veterinarian, it could be a lion, it could be a leopard. 
Are you ready for another one? Yep. All right. Oh! When he takes a shot, he will lay flat on the ground and shoot out through there. Let me go ahead and add these last pieces. This looks real good. Yeah. If I was a vet, I would be really happy with this. We're going to prep here. They're just outside of the grass has habitat. It orcs are about several hundred yards away from us, but they got really, really good here. That's why we're keeping our voices down. Briggs is leaving us. He's going to another zoo. I don't like darted animals, but it's the only way we can get Briggs off the habitat. Be very quiet. Everybody's tense. Until it's over. We're all kind of on pins and needles. Get your fancy pants on. I'm going to put on a ghillie suit. It's basically like a camouflage swamp man outfit. It's hard to wear. It's a sweat box. <laughs> but the animals can't see me because I'm the veterinarian. I'm the bad guy. I'll have my radio off while we wait for them to get closer. I just hope for the best. Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, we're good. All right. Yep. If he gets a successful hit, they'll call us and we'll rush out there. We have effectively smuggled JD in, and he should be hiding like a quiet bush waiting for the oryx. At this point, I've become the surroundings. I'm quiet, try not to breathe too loudly. We're trying to keep the routine as normal as possible so we don't tip off the oryx. Back here and put more hay out and try to look normal. Ah, <laughs> oh, son of a. <laughs> Kate, there's a herd of greater kudu looking at me. <laughs> They're barking. Every other animal out there is going to know something's going on. <laughs> Hey, you gotta get him out of here. 10 4, I'm on it. Hey, there's a herd of greater kudu looking at me. They're barking. Hey, you gotta get him out of here. 10 4, I'm on it. The kudu are already giving him away. They are kind of like the guard dogs of the plains. We need them out of the way so that they don't tip off the orcs. Kate, they're going to blow my cover. Try to move the kudu up here. Come on, ladies. I think we got here just in time. Oh, good job. It's kind of a mental game. That's who pulled us off. They should be good poker players. Right now, the plan is to move the oryx towards the north end. Briggs just crossing the road and headed towards Supply. I can't imagine the pressure JB is under right now. We don't want that animal getting hurt. There's a lot riding on his one shot. There's always a risk anytime we do this, that animal can die. I've picked out Briggs. The only shot that I've got is in the chest. And there's a lot of dangerous parts right there. The lungs there, the heart's there. I'm waiting for him to turn sideways. He's taking a step. He's showing me a little bit of his right shoulder. This is it. This is the money shot. Darn it. 
Mark's been fired. Dark hit. He's off. We need to get to that animal very quickly. Make sure he's safe. You can actually see him right now. All right, he's down. He's in the vet's care right now. I trust these guys. So he's down on the ground right now. Uh, so it means that the drugs are, are taking effect. I'm going to get out. Just stay back. Briggs is a really big animal. He's probably about 550 pounds. He tries to get up, just get out of the way. He has three foot swords on his head. If he swings with that head, I'm going to be stabbed. I don't want that to happen. I know, buddy, I know. So the blindfold is there to decrease stimulation so that Briggs stays under anesthesia. There is a clock ticking. Those drugs only last so long. OK, let's get him set up. We need to stabilize Briggs, get him off the habitat quickly before he wakes up, freaks out, and hurts either himself or one of my team. This allows us to give him oxygen into his lungs. OK, give me a breath. Perfect. He's breathing. Ooh, 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 ooh. He's waking up. Let me see some ketamine. He's down. The drugs are working. OK, let's get him on the move. One, two, and three. OK, take ready? him up. Going up. OK, we're leaving. I'm just really happy we got him. Now he gets to go to his new home, and he's starting a whole new breeding program. What's it do? Right here. OK. Within minutes, he's going to start recovering. Just pull it, just pull it, just come on. Here you go. Hopefully, he just stands right back up. He's up, guys. He's up. Great job, guys. So for the next two weeks, Briggs is going to be inside of this stall. And then we're going to ship him up to another zoo in Ohio to be a breeder bull. It's vital that we got this done because Briggs is going to be able to help increase the orcs population for years to come. He's going to help save his species. Have a nice day at the zoo, guys. Thank you. Thank you. today. Good boy. Diesel is one of our five-year-old male California sea lions. He is a lot of fun. <laughs> we want to make sure that the animals are staying mentally stimulated and physically fit as well. So Back flipping in the water, that's one of the ways that they can actually get away from their predators out in the wild. Asking him to move different parts of his body can build up muscle. He's a great dance partner. He really is. They really enjoy training. They love spending time with us. They're very social animals. Good job, buddy. a really awesome phone call that Amy had her baby. We have been waiting on this baby for seven months. I'm super excited to finally get to meet this little one. It means doing a great job, because if we have a healthy population, we're going to have babies. It's time to see this baby. I want to see that baby. Good morning, Good how are morning. you? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, I heard our little one little has one, a yeah. swollen tush. I, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. This morning, I got a picture of our newest addition. I saw the little baby's swollen butt. My first concern was it might not be pooping. It could mean that the baby's a little dehydrated. The clip that I saw, the little picture, it does look a little poopy. Uh, you think she'll let me see it? Uh, we can try. Okay. Yeah. Let's go take a peek. All righty. Amy. 
We've prepped up some juice bottles and a nutritional shake. Once she sees that, hopefully she'll come right over. What are you doing? Come here. Come here. I'll say hello to you. You want to sit right here? All right. Good. Uh -oh. I can't really see. Amy's got her baby all wrapped up nice like a good mother does. You don't want us to see it. <laughs> Actually, if you can get her to come up. OK. Come on, Amy. Can you come up here? She's allowing us to give her a little bit of juice, but what she's not allowing us to do is see the kids. So I'm working with Christy here to shift her around. Can you come up here real quick? I promise you can have the whole thing. Every time we can get Amy to move, I can get a little bit of a view of the baby. Oh my gosh, that baby. I see some cute ears. Oh yeah. my god. This tiny baby in her arms. It is so darn cute. <laughs> Come on up here. Do you want to come up here? All right. All right. Here, Amy. I'm just catching small glimpses of the butt. But again, the more Christy gets her to move around for me, the more I get. Oh, there it is. There's the butt. I think the swelling is not as bad as the picture made it out to be. Baby looks OK. The baby's bum looks pretty good. It's mildly swollen, but it's not something that I'm so worried about. And Amy looks OK, too. Amy looks awesome. That is a huge relief to know that both Amy and Baby are doing great. Are you hoping for a girl? I'm hoping for a girl. <laughs> I was hoping for a girl the last time. Well, we'll know soon enough. You ready? Yeah. OK, you can see your rectum. Uh -huh. Look right below that. Definitely got a little girl. We do. If there's a penis in there, I can't find it. <laughs> it's a cute little girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am beyond happy. I, I don't even know what other words to use right now. Go. There you go, right here. I give you a high five. <laughs> Good job, Amy! It was great telling Christy that it was a girl. You can see Christy's face almost light up. Good job, Amy. She's pretty excited. She's been wanting a girl since we've been talking about having this kid here. It's a girl! <laughs> But Amy looks great, so at this point, she's clear to go out on Habitat. I'm proud to do what I do. I can't imagine doing anything else. Um, the chimps are my life. That was a great spot, by the way. So the rhinos love <laughs> mud. Hey, Miss Olivia. Stacy and I are getting ready to give Olivia a mud bath. At 51, she's one of the oldest rhinos in North America. Wild rhinos would live into their 40s. So 51 is impressive. We've got some good Carolina red clay. A little hard for her to get in and out of the wallow on her own. It's very similar to, you know, a 90-year-old grandma trying to get in and out of the tub by herself. They don't teach you this your first day on the job. But you just got to mix it up. Just perfect. It's like making icing for a cake. You ready, old girl? Sometimes this ends up being a mud bath for the keepers, too. It's like being a kid again. I like playing in mud puddles, and now I get paid to do it. Yeah. It's a pretty good time for the both of us. Next to eating, mud is their favorite thing. Keeps their skin from drying out. It kind of acts as a sunscreen. Um, it keeps the insects off of them. And so this is just like a big spa day. Their back is more exposed, so it needs to be thicker and rougher. But in their armpits, is like baby soft. Those smooth spots are actually some of their favorite places to be touched. You can tell that she really likes it because of her reactions. <laughs> That's a good spot. When you're 51 years old, you get what you want, huh, Liv? So that's it. Mud bath complete. You ready? Come on, we're all done. Come on, Olivia. Come on, old girl.
girl. Olivia. I thought when I got here, like, these animals don't have any personality. But you realize they're all hysterical. And Olivia makes me laugh the most. Hello. That's a good girl. <laughs> Are you coming or just your horn? There you go. I've been working with Olivia for over seven years. It's a huge bond that you form with them. I know, I know. I want her to be around with me forever, but she's an old lady. Whenever that time comes to where she can't do Olivia things anymore, then it'll be a tough, tough conversation to have. But I mean, that's part of this job. There you go. I'll paint it up for a couple days. There you go. Holly has a mass in her upper right side of her mouth. She wasn't eating things like she normally would be. We're not really sure what it is, so we will be doing um, an anesthetic procedure today. One, two, and three. Okay, slide her in. With older animals, I always have in the back of my mind the worst possible outcome. You get a little nervous. We don't know for sure what's going on until we get into the hospital, but I'll be next to Holly the whole time. One, two, two three. three. Each step on the gurney. We're just gonna do a quick assessment. Two. Perfect. Check her heart rate, check her breathing. Blood pressure hooked up. ECG's hooked up. 91, heart rate of 88. Good. We got to look at that mouth, see where the issue is, because this is what we got called down to look at. Do you want to see? Yeah. It's swollen. That is not right. It does look like a mass. JB noticed something in the back of her mouth. I'm getting a little worried. So cancer's on the list, some type of infection. It could be an old fracture. It's not good, not for an animal of this age. The next step is we're going to shoot some x-rays of the skull, and we're going to try to figure out where exactly this is coming from and maybe what's going on. This is not good. If you can look right here, she definitely has a, a large mass. This mass is starting to eat into bone, which is preventing her from opening her mouth. First thing that comes to mind, it could be cancer. It's not good because she's 28 years old. That is really, really old for a black bear. I want to get all of the people that are involved in Holly's life together. Aaron, the curator, is here. Chris, he's here. Alexis is here. I got to talk to them about some of the options, but it's not good. It's much more extensive than we really wanted it to be. 20-year-old bear with a six-month-old mass. There's nothing we can do to fix it. And it's going to get bigger. Bigger. Um, so putting her through intensive treatment for a couple more months is really just not going to be fair to her. My recommendation is we euthanize Holly today. When JB mentioned euthanizing her, it hits you, emotions hit you, um, but I trust him. I know he's doing what's best for Holly. She's lived a really, really good life with us. My final gift as a veterinarian is saying, I'm going to help you go peacefully.
It's nice that she can go surrounded by people that love her. I'm tearing up because I, I know how much she means to everybody else and it, it's hard. <laughs> so, it never gets easy, but it's the right thing to do, so we just do it. It's nice that they let us be here and feel like we can comfort her. So we'll give you guys a few minutes. Right now, uh, we're giving the keepers and the animal care staff just a little bit of time. We're at the end, so allowing them just to say goodbye to their, their friend. You fall in love with them, and having to let go and say goodbye is, is very difficult. The last few moments are definitely the hardest. You kind of just are in your own bubble. You're just thinking about experiences you've had with her. All those memories are flooding through your head. You know that you gave her the best, and you know she had a good life. Girl. She's at peace. There's no pain. She's in a better place, so. Thanks for letting me give her honey this morning. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, Amy actually had her baby just a little while ago, and you will have the time of your life watching that baby play on Habitat. Today is the first day that the baby is gonna be out on Habitat with mom. I'm really excited because this will be baby's first time seeing the world. We're gonna go up by our feeding area where we throw them snacks and get a really good look at her. All right. Let's go see this baby. Let's go see that baby. With Amy being a low-ranking chimp, we do worry about the boys being a little rough with her. She's gonna have to take extra special care of that baby. Have you seen Amy? What's Amy? Right by the window. Today is the first day that the baby is going to be out on Habitat with mom. What's Amy? Have you seen Amy? I can see Amy way over there, right by the window. <gasps> you must. Oh, I was not cute. expecting her to be right up here. Oh, oh no. my God. Hello, sweet baby girl. She's even tinier out here. It's crazy to me how just a few weeks ago it was just this tiny little heartbeat on an ultrasound, and now we have a real baby <laughs> out here on the habitat. Oh my gosh, everybody just wants to be near her. Amy's getting groomed. That's a really good sign. It's really great to see all of the adult males being so gentle with her and the baby. She would be a, such a good mama. When looking at the baby, it's hard not to make a lot of really cute noises because we're all very excited. Oh, look at this little hair. Oh, the little toes. She's so cute. <laughs> Welcome to the Chimp Habitat, baby girl. I think the public is surprised and excited to see the new baby. They're like, kind of looking at it, like, well, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, that's a baby. Hey, guys, my name is Christy. I'm one of the chimp keepers here. Our youngest is just a few days old, um, and it's a baby girl. She doesn't have a name yet. Amy is being the mom we all knew she would be. 
Now it's the hard part. Uh, we all have to decide on a name for the new baby girl. I really like Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fine. Do you know termite mounds in Africa can be the size of this truck? Girl, see you. Go. Hey, Nick Knack. Nick Knack does a moonwalk. Go, buddy, go! Today's the day. Briggs is going to make his final move. So we're going to load him up and then send him off to Ohio. We're using his instincts to do this as quick as possible. It's the safest way to get him on the trailer. Okay, are you guys ready? Ready up here. Step for a nice job, everybody. All right. That was pretty smooth. I am sad to see Briggs go, but he is part of a bigger plan. He will be going elsewhere to breed and help save the orc species. You know, I have four females, so he'll probably be pretty happy. There goes Briggs. Have fun in your new home. Make some more babies. Folks, one thing that you'll find you go through the whole circle of life here at this zoo. You'll see animals come and go. We experience births, we experience deaths. It's part of life. You learn to deal with it. Heather brought by Holly's prints. Oh my goodness. She has tiny little feet. They're really beautiful. She is a really sweet bear. We really miss her. But you know you've got other animals to care for, and you remember the ones that you lose, and you miss them, but you continue that cycle. Nova, Luna, outside. You just keep doing your job. Yeah, I just finished up at Rocky Coast. Can you give me, like, 10 minutes before I get to you? At the North Carolina Zoo, there are definitely sad days. There's a heart on my staff. There's a heart on me. But then there are days when you get that call that there was a baby chimp born. Those are the days that make us smile. Those are the days that keep us going. The keepers picked a bunch of really, really good names. So I'm really excited to see what they're going to be. It is my pleasure and my honor to unveil uh, and announce the name of our newest chimp. So on behalf of the state of North Carolina, I give you Asha. <laughs> It was a really good feeling to see my name on the board. It's Swahili for life. These are our keepers. <laughs> Working in a zoo, it's moments like this where it makes everything worth it. Asha is just the perfect way to celebrate life.